Hey, what's going on? If you want to learn how to set up a corporation, check out my new channel, The Corporate Game. The link is below. It's all about starting corporations, LLCs and all that good stuff. Links below. All right. I'm about to say something that's going to sound really, really crazy. Petty crime is about to go through a period where petty criminals will not be punished. I know you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, remember a few weeks ago when someone broke the window of my SUV? I didn't even look at filing a police report because I, I knew that even if they had this person on camera and even if they caught this person, pretty much nothing was going to happen to them. You want to know why? Let me go ahead and tell you why the prison pipeline is about to be chock full. Let me give you the play by play. Remember this big thing about defunding the police that happened before the pandemic? There are ramifications from those acts and those pr proclamations today. Because here's the reality. The police were never really defunded. Didn't happen. However, what did happen was a lot of the police officers got pissed off and a lot of the police officers quit the police force. This was before the pandemic. So we go into the pandemic with this surging murder rate, with this surging crime rate, and we already have understaffed police departments around the nation because a lot of cops is just like, I'm not going to do this. Uh, the case that with Derek Chauvin and George Floyd, a lot of cops quit because of that, because it's like, hey, I'm doing my job. I can go to jail for murder. So we have across the nation an understaffed police force. So that's the first problem. That's the first play in the playbook. Now, during this pandemic and during this stimulus fake economy, we have a lot of things that have changed right now. I'm going to say this with all sincerity. There are a lot of people who would choose to commit crime than to work a honest job. So this is one of the reasons that the prison pipeline is about to be ridiculous. And I'm going to explain to you why. And if you're looking for investment opportunities, Prison stocks are going to be a growth industry probably for the next 10 years. Because going ahead, this first thing, the understaffed police force, they were already understaffed before the pandemic. And then what do we have? We had a surging murder rate. We had surging domestic violence. And these cops are stressed out. OK, so what's going to happen? Because we have these understaffed police forces is that petty crime and whatever is defined as petty crime. Like to me, when that dude broke the window of my SUV, that wasn't petty crime. That cost me 550 bucks. But to the police, they're going to have to start ranking crimes. It's going to have is this is a crime that we want to dedicate our resources to or is this a crime we want to let slide? They're going to have to. It's, it's like you ever go to the emergency room and you get to the emergency room at five o'clock and you're sitting there waiting and you're about to see and the next thing you know, all the nurses and doctors are running to the back because there's traumas coming in and you get booted back. This is what's going to start happening with crimes. Your crimes are going to be ranked in priority of severity. So let's say someone breaks into your house. You're not at home. They break into your house and they steal a few things that's going to become a low priority crime to you. It's high priority because they broke in your house. They violated your, 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 um, peace of mind. You, you're kind of freaking out. That's going to become a low priority crime. You want to know why? Because with this surging murder rate, with this surge in domestic, because violent crimes are going to take a precedent over non-violent crimes. So breaking and entering, breaking into a car, you know, anything that is non-violent is going to immediately be defaulted to a low priority. 
Now, once again, to you, if you're the victim of this nonviolent crime, it's a high priority. You're pissed off, you're upset. But to the police, to the understaffed police for force, to the police force with limited resources, they're gonna have to start doing this. And this is why the prison pipeline is about to be full. Because once again, um, petty crimes are gonna explode. You know, you're gonna have a lot of smash and grab. Like, I feel that this wave of crime that is coming, because right now crime is spiking, but I don't think we're anywhere where we're gonna be, is going to force the redesign of storefronts. It's gonna force the, re like, you know, you have these beautiful stores with these windows and their high dollar merchandise. If they still have these windows, these windows are gonna be probably like that thick. That's what they're gonna do because as trends and things happen, people start to prepare for the trends. So I'm sorry to say that unfortunately, like I said, I've been the victim of crime. You know, when I look at it with people taking my rental cars and keeping them, to me, that's a crime. Uh, to the police, that is a low priority because it is a non-violent crime because violent crimes are spiking. And, you know, it, it's, it's really, really frustrating when you're the victim of a criminal act and the police are kind of like nonchalant. They're kind of like, well, this happened. You know, at least they didn't rob you and put a gun in your face. Now, what's going to happen is violent crimes. Now, they're going to prosecute those. They're going to go after those with everything they got because a violent crime, a, a violent offender is a danger to society. Someone like the worthless person, uh, the dude who just ran through the Christmas parade. Because, you know, the, those type of people are, will be prosecuted. They will be put in jail. They will go to court. But what you're going to see, and because people pay attention to situations, people are going to understand that they can commit nonviolent crimes and not that much is going to happen to them. And that's why nonviolent crimes are going to explode. This is why scamming is going to go. I feel that 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025 would be record years for scamming because you can do these things. And even if you're caught, not much is going to happen because what's going to happen with the with the surge of the murder rate with the surge of domestic violence with the surge of violent crimes that's going to take up the capacity of the prisons they're going to you know prison is going to be reserved for extremely violent or in the case of career criminals like someone who's been committing crime for 20 years these folks will get prosecuted and go to jail but if you're like a first time offender, maybe you broke into a car and that's your first offense, probably ain't nothing gonna happen to you. Probably nothing gonna happen to you. So with this, people are gonna figure, and this is what's gonna happen. People are gonna organize because they're gonna realize that essentially, if this is your first offense, you're gonna get a pass because the prison population, the, the prison cells are being reserved for these violent criminals, these heinous acts of crime. So they're going to create rings to get people who have no criminal record to commit these little crimes. And they're, they're none, none's going to happen to them. None's going to happen to them. And, you know, once again, I, I, I feel you. If you're a victim of one of these nonviolent crimes, it is extremely serious to you. But to the police. And once again, you got to understand what's going on. The police already have limited capacity and limited resources. That's right. That's a given. So once again, they're going to have to rank the crimes and like dudes, my dudettes. I just, this is why I carry a gun every day because what you're going to have to do is protect yourself. So in the case of a nonviolent crime, like right now, you need to go around and shore up all of the weak spots in your house. You need to, if you're one of those people, like I would never do this. I'm not the type of person that would leave my laptop on my car seat in broad daylight. I would never do that. And my windows are tinted and I still wouldn't do it. So you gotta stop doing stuff like that. 
you've got to let that stuff go. And once again, you've got to take a defensive posture. You need to look at your house. You might want to think about replacing your back and front doors if they're kind of flimsy, because what you're going to have people do is just kick it indoors. They're going to be kicking indoors. They're going to be running in your house. They're going to be trying to grab whatever they can grab. That's that's what's going to be going on. So this we're going to see a serious wave of crime of violent crime like murder rates. Murder rate will go up in 2022 and the domestic violence rate will go up in 2022 and violent crimes will go up in 2022 and nonviolent crimes will explode because, you know, a lot of people think criminals are stupid. Uh, I don't think criminals are stupid. I think there's a, I think, like I said, there are many people who are making the decision now to commit crimes versus working a regular job. So there's a lot of smart criminals out there and they're going to assess and analyze the situation and they're going to commit these crimes and ain't nothing going to happen to them. This is going to be, and this is what's going to create new legislation. This is going to create new laws on the books because what I feel is going to happen because you know, people are going to write their Congress people from, you know, and they're going to write their local uh, government bodies. And I feel that this is going to usher in a kind of a stand your ground situation. And what I mean by that, because the police are going to be really, really tied up with all these ver murders and violent crimes and domestic disputes. You as the citizen are going to have the right to shoot these people. Now, right now, if someone is doing something to you that isn't too violent, you cannot shoot them. If someone's like breaking in your car and they're, then they hear you and they run off, you cannot shoot them. But what's going to happen in the future? Because this, this big body of crime, just imagine a huge body of crime, right? What's going to happen is that they are going to give you as a citizen, the right to use lethal force to protect your property because the police are going to be so tied up. So this is going to like, once again, this is how my mind is thinking because the police were not going to be able to respond to each and every uh, nonviolent crime. Essentially, if you have a nonviolent crime and you follow a police report, in my opinion, you're just wasting your time because nothing's going to happen. They're not going to find the guy because let's say you you leave home, you, you come back home and you find out that your house was ransacked and they stole some valuable stuff from you and you the police come out and they take a report. You don't have no cameras. You don't know who it was unless this is a part of a pattern of crime where there's a ring of people who are consistently doing this and they can get a lot of evidence. If it's just you, there's no evidence, there's nothing they can do. They're not going to put a lot of time and energy into it because once again, the police have limited resources. So what you as Joe Q public has to do is protect and, you know, like I said, um, I carry a gun most days. Um, it's just a prophylactic measure at this point. But what I feel is once this stuff hits, because it hasn't hit yet, and part of what's going to make this hit is we're starting, the stimulus economy is deleveraging. And there's a lot of people in pain. There's a lot of people who are having issues. There's a lot of people who are uh, struggling. And as we transition from this stimulus economy and move back to a real economy, oh man, this is when this thing happens because um, once again, you saw my video, Black Friday sales. This is the worst Black Friday on record. Worst Black Friday. And I, I think once all the numbers come out, this is gonna be the worst Christmas on record. And what's happening is the real economic factors and that dynamics are starting to come into the marketplace. People don't have money. Inflation is running out of amok. Like 
We've had inflation of almost 17% from November of 2020 to November of 2021, 17%. That is unsustainable because that's going to be crushing. You know, if you're already just barely hanging on and your gas bill increases 200 bucks a month, your grocery bill increases 300 bucks a month and your electricity increases a hundred. So across the board, you know, your gas, your groceries, your electricity, your bills, you know, the same bills that last year you were able to pay now cost you an additional thousand dollars per month. That is some intense pressure on people. A lot of people are going to buckle under that pressure. And this is why we're going to have a new class of criminal. You know, you've got a group of people who are criminals because they like that. Uh, I, you know, with uh, rap music, glorizing, glorifying drug use. I think a lot of people get into it because it's sexy, right? You're going to have people who are going to become criminals by force. You're going to have some people who are going to choose to be criminals, but you're going to have some people, you know, um, essentially they're going to be working. They're going to do everything they can. And it's just not going to work out. And next thing you know, they're going to see an opportunity to do some crime and get some money. And they're going to do it because their, their children are hungry. And this is going to be a very strange, crazy period in America because people are already at the brink. And as the, we move away from the stimulus economy and get back to the real economy, the normal economy, you're going to see a lot of crazy things. You're going to see a lot of people doing something that they normally would not do. So this is one of the reasons, like, like I said, I, I feel that we're going to have a period where petty crime is going to be bananas. It's just going to be ridiculous. And this is where I feel that the laws are going to change. Cause like right now, like if I was in the garage when someone was breaking my window and I saw that person and I shot them while they were running away, I would go to jail because they were leaving the scene. They were not a danger to me. That's going to change. So what's going to happen? And this is where it gets crazy. Once those laws change, and then when people start shooting these petty criminals and killing these petty criminals, the petty criminals are now going to start arming themselves. They're not going to stop robbing. No, 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 no. They're not going to stop robbing. And then this is going to turn petty nonviolent crime into petty violent crime because there's a difference. Like you rob a bank with a gun, that is significant prison time because you use the firearm. If you rob a bank and you don't have a gun and you just somehow manage to do that, it's less prison time. So what we're going to have is we're going to force the level, and this is going to contribute to the levels of violent crime skyrocketing. Because like I said, I, I really feel that they're going to change the laws across the books because the people are going to, because you know people are going to be pissed off. People are like. Like every day on my next door, I see these things like people will pull up other day, someone pulled up and they were literally in the store five minutes. They come out, their windows broke. The kid's backpack is gone. So what could be in a backpack? Maybe a computer? I don't know, but this is what's happening. You're going to start to see a lot of petty, crazy crime because once again, we got a segment of the worthless people. They're not going to work. They just refuse to work and they're going to jump in straight into crime. That's what they're going to do. And then we got another group of people who are honorable, um, decent folks who are going to be by circumstances forced into criminal activity. They will be forced into criminal activity because they're not going to have any other choices. Now, I know that it sounds like I'm giving them a pass, but um, I've been there and I've actually erred on the side of breaking the law. I did it a few times and then I felt so bad and I stopped. So I know the pressure that can hit a person and make them do something illegal. I know that pressure. Now, fortunately for me, I only did it a few times and then I stopped. And that's why I never went to jail. And that's why, and once again, 
here's another thing. Once these people start to convert to doing crime, they're going to find out that crime is extremely profitable. So I can go work at Chick-fil-A 40 hours and make 400, maybe 500 bucks a week. Or I can do this one criminal act and make $1,500 an hour. You see what I'm saying? The appeal and the profitability of the criminal acts is going to be so enticing. A lot of people are going to go to the dark side. And this is why I feel, you know, next 10 years, let's go ahead and let's just create this next 10 year window. We're going to see so much change in legislations because like right now you cannot shoot someone. Now, the way I understand and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but if someone is trying to break in your house and they're outside your house, you cannot shoot them. But if you wake up and they're in your house, you can shoot them. And it's going to get to the point where you're going to be able to protect your property. And this it, it, it's going to be crazy what's going to happen. Because so look at your legislative bodies, look at the laws, look at what's going to happen. And also look at your police force. Is your police force fully staffed? Is your police force fully funded? Like once again, defund the police. They never defunded the police, but many police departments did have budgetary constraints. They didn't have enough officers. They didn't have enough equipment. They didn't have enough stuff. So, you know, like for me, I don't, I've never had a bad relationship with the police. You know, always when I needed their help, the police was there. So I never had a, you know, F the police attitude or anything. Um, I would say a hundred percent of my encounters with the police have been positive. So I'm not one of those, you know, F the police and do it like once again, I have empathy because these guys are going to be kind of like, well, I think in some states, in some cases, these guys are kind of like the healthcare workers when COVID was going crazy. They're overworked, they're overwhelmed, they're underpaid, and they're dealing like, you know, they're dealing with the public and the public can be crazy. So this is something that I feel is coming, like I said, right now. And, you know, I had people it's like, where are you getting your stats? Just Google murder and you will see multiple arguments article saying the murder rate has increased 30 percent it is going up it's going up because you know like i talked about in that video when i was in that boarding house and that guy had a gun out over some butter so if you already have someone who's mentally unfit mentally unwell and then you put a little extra stress on them it is easy to see how these things can pop off so yeah, that's what I think. Like the prison pipeline is about to explode. First with the murders, with the violent criminals, with domestic violence, all this other stuff, all these heinous acts. This is going to fill up the prisons. And they're just literally not gonna have rooms for petty criminals unless they're career petty criminals, where they have a long track record of multiple crimes. Then they will kind of shoehorn them in there. But I think it's gonna be wild. I think it's going to be wild. I think it's going to be crazy. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what is happening to you because uh, we're having some really good conversations. Like when I said that rent was going up, a lot of people chimed in and said, yep, it happened to me. It happened to me. I had to move. I had to move because once again, rent, rent, rent ain't going down. <laughs> rent ain't going down no time soon. And this, this, this crazy criminal spree because this is going to be something that you're going to see people talking about. It's going to be in the news. It's going to be in the articles because our society of the haves and the have nots and that polarization is going to become even more pronounced, like way more pronounced, because one of the things that you've got to look at, and this is what I talked about in my video where I was wrong about ec economic upward mobility. Um, there's just some people due to their environments, they're just screwed. They're just simply screwed from birth. And if they don't have some intervening forces, they're just screwed, they're just screwed. So we're gonna see 
a lot of change you're going to be i'm going to be talking about it. i'm going to be talking about the laws change because that's something i'm keeping an eye on because i'm gonna i'm just say it like when i went down there and i saw my window was broke i was pissed because in my mind i'm like the windows are so tinted like i have that dark tint you cannot see inside the vehicle so they broke my window just to look around and there was nothing of value in there because i don't leave anything of value in my vehicles so they broke my window and they did not score and i feel once again maybe i'm wrong that the average person who has a really nice car doesn't leave stuff of value in their car i'm i could be wrong but i'm just thinking most folks with a you know a Benz, a BMW, a Ferrari, a Porsche, or something, they ain't gonna leave nothing of value in there. But you know, uh, someone put in a comment that people in San Francisco were leaving their doors open and their trunk open, and signs on their car. There's nothing of value in here to keep people from breaking in, because once again, that kind of crime, these guys are never gonna be punished. They can cause a lot of financial duress and they can cost you a lot of money getting your stuff repaired. And these folks, you even if you knew who they were, even if you could find them, even if you could sue them, you're not getting anything because these people don't have any money. So yeah, I think the prison pipeline is about to be bananas. Because once again, if you look at all the stats, all of the stats, we're trending up, we're trending up, we're trending up because you know, before the pandemic, I was doing recessionary videos before the pandemic because I knew that the American economy was weak. And this is one of the reasons that the pandemic created such economic pain, created such a bad situation. And then we had these bounces because the stimulus, the stimulus, um, it kept people afloat. I will admit that. But the stimulus also created a new mindset in many people. And once again, I, I've said this before, I'm gonna say it again. When granddad died, grandma was in trouble because grandma never learned how to work. Grandma never learned how to pay bills. So someone had to help her with this. And we had this protracted period of time where people weren't working. And I just think a lot of stuff came out of it. A lot of stuff, that bad stuff that came out of it. So once again, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you've been impacted by crime. And I will see you guys in the next one.